Anyway, once Hermes hollowed out the shell, he blew into it. The sound echoed deeply, but it wasn't quite what he wanted. Outside the cave, he could hear owls, crickets, frogs, and a bunch of other critters making sounds at different pitchers, all at the same time. Hermes wanted something like that, a bunch of sounds simultaneously. Over by the fire, he spotted some long, stringy sheep tendons that Mai had set out to dry for sewing or whatever. Hermes thought, hmm. He stretched one tendon between his foot and his hand. He plucked it with his free hand, and the gut string vibrated. The tighter he made the string, the higher the note. Oh, yeah, he said. This'll work. He glanced at his mom to make sure she was still asleep. Then Hermes set to work. From his mom's loom, he took a couple of wooden towels and ran them through the tortoise's shell so they stuck out the neck like little horns. Then he fastened a third dowel across the top, between the two braces, so they looked kind of like football goalposts. He ran seven strings from the top of the neck to the base of the tortoise shell. Then he tuned the strings to different pitches. When he strummed, the sound was amazing. Hermes had invented the first stringed instrument, which he decided to call it a lyre. Why? Maybe because he was a liar. I don't know. If he'd spent a few more hours working, he probably could have invented the acoustic guitar, the stand-up bass, and the Fender Stratocaster, too. But by now, he was really hungry. He hid his new lyre in the blankets of his cradle and set out to find those yummy, magical cows. He climbed to the top of Mount Silene. Hey, no big deal for such a buff baby, and peered across Greece, watching and listening. Apollo kept his cows well hidden at night in a secret meadow in Pieria, which was about 300 miles north of Selene. But Hermes had excellent senses. In no time, he heard a distant, <coughs> Another cow said, Shh, we're hiding. First cow said, Sorry. Up on the mountaintop, Hermes grinned. Ha! I've got you now, cows. 300 miles? No problem. Hermes ran there in about an hour which might have actually looked really strange, his newborn god tearing across Greece, his hands still covered in tortoise blood. Fortunately, it was nighttime, and nobody saw him. When he got to the secret meadow, meadow, Hermes drooled at the sight of so many delicious, big, fat, healthy heifers, hundreds of them grazing in the tall grass between the base of a mountain and the sandy shores of the Mediterranean. I don't want to be greedy, he said to himself, Maybe I'll just take fifty or so, but how to cover my tracks? He couldn't just stuff fifty cows in a sack and sneak away, and if he herded them, Apollo would easily be able to follow the hoofprints of so many animals. Hermes stared at the beach. Then he examined some nearby crepe myrtle. Hmm, not sure what he was doing exactly. He broke off some twigs and young branches from the myrtle trees. He remembered back in Maya's cave, his cradle had been woven like a basket and he started to weave the branches and twigs into big paddles. He wrapped these around his feet and created the first snowshoes, which was pretty amazing since it never snowed in Greece. Hermes took a few steps in the grass, then on the sand. The paddle shoes left wide, vague impressions that completely masked the size of his feet. Perfect, he thought. That covers me. And now for the cows. He waded across to the meadow in his new shoes. He managed to separate the herd shooing fifty of the fattest, juiciest cows away from the rest. Those fifty, he drove sideways towards the beach. Once they reached the sand, Hermes snapped his fingers and whistled to get the cows' attention. When all fifty of them were looking at him, their tails facing the ocean, he said, Okay, guys, now back it up. Back it up. Ever tried to get fifty cows walking backwards? It's not easy. Hermes kept their attention on him, whistling and making backup noises like, Beep! 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 While he waved his hands and arms and advanced towards the water. The cattle shuffled backwards, right into the surf. Then Hermes turned, pointed them all south, and herded them a few hundred yards through the waves before leading them on to dry land again. When he looked back, he had to appreciate his own trickery. It looked as if fifty cows had marched out of the sea and joined the, ma marched out of the, sea and joined the main herd. No one would be able to tell where the missing cows had gone. Hermes left no footprints that could be traced to him. He led the cows south through the fields of Greece.